Hello, Greenbrier students. I miss you, and I wanted to make a special video because March 20th is the Very Hungry Caterpillar Day. And it is a special day because the Very Hungry Caterpillar was created, was born on that day. Some of you may remember that I had a special display outside of our room at the beginning of the year to celebrate the Very Hungry Caterpillar's 50th birthday last year in 2019. So that was a very special time. And Mrs. Davis has a very special connection with the author, Eric Carle. I'm gonna put this down for a minute and show you my picture. When I was a little girl, in first grade, I got to go to a conference. It was a young authors conference in Toledo, Ohio. And I was in first grade and I got to meet Eric Carl. This is him right here. And on the very edge of the picture, kind of looking to the side, that's me. And this brings so many wonderful memories and so many happy feelings for Miss Davis because it was such a great day in my life and I still remember how special that day was. So I wanted to make a special video for you to talk a little bit about Eric Carl and the Very Hungry Caterpillar. One thing that Eric Carl has been asked about with making the Very Hungry Caterpillar book is why um, the butterfly in the Very Hungry Caterpillar comes from a cocoon, not a chrysalis. And I know many of you have learned and know about what a chrysalis is. So I wanted to read you his explanation off of the website before I read his book because I have heard people talk about this and sometimes they are not aware of why he chose the word cocoon. So his explanation says, here's the scientific explanation. In most cases, a butterfly does come from a chrysalis, but not all. There's a rare genus called Parnassian that pupates in a cocoon. These butterflies live in the Pacific Northwest in Siberia and as far away as North Korea and the Northern Islands of Japan. And here's my unscientific explanation. My caterpillar is very unusual. As you know, caterpillars don't eat lollipops and ice cream, so you won't find my caterpillar in any guides. But also, when I was a small boy, my father would say, Eric, come out of your cocoon. He meant I should open up and be receptive to the world around me. For me, it would not sound right to say, come out of your chrysalis. And so poetry won over science. So you can go to Eric Carl's website if you are ever curious about any other things about his books or him growing up, how he became an artist, how he makes his art, lots of interesting things on his website www.eric-carl.com And after I read The Very Hungry Caterpillar to you, if you want to stick around for just a couple more minutes, I will share a little bit from a letter that I wrote to Mr. Carl this past summer um, telling him how much I appreciated all the work he's done for his life and how happy that day made me that I was able to meet him. Um, he just happened to turn 90 years old this past summer in 2019. And so I wrote a special letter to him, sent him a card, and sent this photo and asked if he would autograph, sign it for me. And he actually sent it back, signed to me, before we were getting ready to start school in August. So here is the Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf.
And one Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you are enjoying your learning during the Learn From Home. If you are not too tired and you want to listen just a couple more minutes, I would love to share a little bit of my letter with you that I wrote to Eric Carl this past summer. I sent him this letter and like I mentioned, a card for his 90th birthday. And I sent a self-addressed envelope, which is the requirement for getting something back from him in the mail. And inside, I sent the photo, the same photo that I showed you at the beginning. I sent this photo and he pointed with an arrow over here to me, Sherry, Mrs. Davis's name, and he signed his name right there. So that is so very special for me and so many wonderful memories. And then he also included his photo. So, I wanted to do this tribute to Eric Carl and just thank him for his life's work. He is an amazing artist. So I wanna just read a little bit of my letter real quick and then I will say goodbye. Dear Mr. Carl, I have been wanting to write for some time, and I figured what better time than your 90th birthday. I share a pretty special connection with you, in my opinion. I had the pleasure of meeting you when I was in first grade in 1976. I was selected by my teacher to participate in the University of Toledo's first annual Young Authors Conference in Ohio, and you were the guest author. Wow. Sometimes I still can't believe I was there to see you. Several years ago, I was able to track down and purchase the enclosed photo from the Toledo Blade. What a happy day that was for me. 
I have the original that I purchased and I just made two more copies. I have enclosed them in this, pack in this package. I signed one for you and I am kindly asking if you would be willing to sign one for me as well. You see, I have a special connection with the Very Hungry Caterpillar. I also turned 50 this past year in February in 2019. It is so very exciting to be able to keep the, these wonderful memories and continue sharing the joy with my students. I am planning a special display when I return in August, celebrating the Hungry Caterpillar and your birthday as well. And I was able to make that display happen and was so excited that I actually got the things back from him in the mail that I did. And then I went on to say that I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing so much joy to the world through your books. When I finally found out the process you go through to create your artwork, I could not believe the tedious work involved with cutting the tissue paper to go into the drawings. It is simply amazing. I wish you a very happy 90th birthday. I hope it is filled with joy, laughter, and wonderful food that will leave you completely satisfied and not overly indulged like the caterpillar. I am attaching the pictures of my certificate from the Young Authors Conference and the sketch you drew on the back of my program of events and classes from 1976. Yes, I still have them. <clears throat> Thank you again for all you have done in your lifetime and have an amazing 90th birthday. All my love, Sherry Davis. And here's a copy of the certificate that I had and his little sketch that he drew me on the back of my program that day. So these are some very wonderful memories for Mrs. Davis. I have enjoyed sharing them with you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you have a great day celebrating the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Bye-bye.